Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, we are reviewing the King Song 14D. So, let me tell you more about it. Well, that was it. <laughs> Wrong Way. So now we are back in the studio, well, my apartment, anyways, because outside it's quite cold to do these reviews around zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, freezing point. And this video is going to be more of a off-script video. I'm going to review the 14D uh, according to the categories I'm recently using. That will be safety, durability, ride, performance, features, and lastly the conclusion. But I'm also going to tell you what I think in general about small wheels and why I think that in general on the market um, the evolution of these small commuter friendly you know last mile solutions has been quite stale and i think that it deserves some love so that's something i'm going to talk about at the end of this video but first maybe a little backstory because i really actually like small wheels <laughs> I, I love to use small wheels like that as a last mile solution if i'm for example taking a train and I don't have really a far distance to go from the train to the you know last destination I would rather take this than a veteran Sherman if I go shopping this thing just fits perfectly underneath the cart that you get in shopping malls uh, or if I go you know to a restaurant that's close by or if I just don't feel like you know gearing up and putting all of my protectors on which I still do like I ride this thing still with my wrist guards and with my full face helmet but it's by far not as time consuming as putting on your heavy motorcycle gear and your knee pads and all of that. So I really like using those wheels. It's also really refreshing to do some tricks on it. They feel so light. They're so inconspicuous, you know? If you're just trolling this thing around in the shopping mall, like people don't mind it so much. People don't look at you that much as with a big wheel. And also for riding on a sidewalk, at you know pedestrian speeds i don't speed with this thing on the on the sidewalks anyways but it feels just way more nimble and controllable at small speeds it's so precise so since i basically own wheels i always wanted to have like a small wheel that is for like i don't know for tricks for small distances for like fun stuff going i don't know just to friends and not needing to gear up very intensely and put it you know easily into the metro or the train or whatnot so yeah, that's been it. I already had a V5F, but this one broke down like three times. I never could repair it. it it was used so it might might have been damaged already before but it just kept breaking on me so i sold it i no actually i didn't sell it i gave it away to a friend and he made a scooter out of that video linked here <laughs> and i also have and i'm selling it now i actually pretty much sold it already the m103 and the m103 turned out just to be uh, a wheel that is more designed for children for lighter riders it doesn't have a trolley handle really uh, the on off button is really in an awkward spot and and definitely I had some learning experience with it I like the interesting ride but that's not something I want to keep as you know my own wheel to uh, use for errands and stuff although it does fit in a backpack which is pretty cool so in comes the 14d and I gotta tell you that in terms of wheels I own like small wheels this is now by far the best I've had all right so let's get into the review shall we
first up there is safety and Kingsong is actually well known for for its safety and you know the electronics they use here um, just as well as the BMS the charge board doesn't have current flowing through it all the time like for example on the bigode wheels there's fuses inside I think even if you buy it from e-wheels uh, you will get a additional fuse in the box if, uh, if this would break there is a tilt back according to speed the top speed here is around 30 kilometers an hour and also if you overpower it um, there is a, a slight pedal dip so you can like feel it out in order not to accelerate too much there's also beeping uh, there is you know protection against uh, extended hill climbs which I also found out Um, and there's also beeping at 30 kilometers an hour, uh, which you can't turn off. You can also put it earlier, but 30 kilometers an hour is the limit and uh, you can't turn it off, which is good. I guess that's safety. It's funny also to see that on the picture here uh, on, the, on the pedal, you see that the rider isn't like, it's not allowed to tilt hard on this thing. Uh, it, well, it still does have, you know, torque. This is definitely not a performance UC. It's way easier to overpower than, you know, bigger UCs, especially for heavier riders. So yeah, I, I think it's just kind of kind of nice to see where 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 we're going with ESCs. You know, with hard acceleration, with vehicles that are not our last mile solution, but instead are our you know only mile solution. So that's pretty cool. In terms of waterproofing, there is no rating on this thing, but uh, Kingsong goes out of their way to test all of these things uh, for water ingress. I just taped up my power button here on the top. I think I didn't need to do that. Uh, I, I still did that because it's a metal button on the top. I wore this thing in the rain, also a bit in snow. Everything is fine, but still it's better to have, you know, a rating, an actual rating like Emotion does for their EUCs. Um, there was one case of such a um, model. I don't know what was really the cause, uh, but a fire with, with the 14D. I don't really know the backstory on that, but I thought I would mention that. Just to keep in mind that this thing is not a tank, it's not designed to, you know, for extreme jumping, it's not designed for heavy loads and just pushing it all the time. This is more of a, you know, commuter that you take care of and you don't uh, push it too hard. I did push it a bit, but um, always not for extended time and with regards to safe use of electric unicycles. I will also make a video in the future how to safely use electric wheels so be on the lookout for that as well. I didn't disassemble the wheel yet. Uh, I felt like there was no need for that. Maybe if I will need to change a tire or something's wrong with it, then I'll do it. So maybe like a 2000 kilometer review will be um, covering that too. But everything is working fine. There's just one. There was something like before jumping out here. something is just loose on the inside so maybe I'll need to open it up for that as well but as said Kingsong is known for their safety and their attention to um, you know the safety of the rider so I think there's nothing wrong here but maybe in the in the later review I will also check out the insides of this wheel okay uh, with that said let's move on to the durability and all in all the shape of this thing is designed to absorb you know impacts very well have the shell made out of plastic in sort of like an egg shape looks a bit dated now but it's really functional um, lights are here and the pedals oh that's the that's the Ampton phone the pedals are also pretty sturdy and big but let me put it out for me but they also open up a bit in my eyes maybe just a tiny bit too uh, difficultly there's also grip tape here which is of good quality but maybe could be a bit better and there's also foam bits here and here which is awesome um, this all of this looks pretty robust it took a couple falls already you can see it here by the lack of foam <laughs> I lost it somewhere but in general it's uh, a pretty durable product I think uh, also the tr trolley handle on the top is made out of metal which is really nice locks in place and feels maybe not the sturdiest of trolley handles but definitely better, better than Gotway and I think I like it more also than the Inmotion one it just feels 
bit more sturdy and the great thing is that it's integrated so it doesn't like bend like on the Inmotion V5 or V10F if you fall. There's also the lift switch integrated which works most of the time. I think that was a point of fail failure at some point for King Song, but I think they resolved it with some sort of update to the electronics here. So in terms of durability it's a pretty solid wheel. Maybe one thing I have to comment about is um, the low plastics here, especially here from if you look from the side. This is not a thing you want to jump on onto curbs because this plastic just might scratch and, and you might fall. So ideally you need to lift it up and, and put it up onto the curb or you can like, just like pull that and jump but I don't recommend that. That's just like a trick I wanted to show off in the video. Valve access is also really good here on the side. Um, I don't know about the um, tire changing process. Again, this is not an in-depth review. Maybe I'll do that in the future. All right, so now let's talk about... Wait, let me just adjust it. All right, so now let's talk about the ride of this thing. And the ride is really great, I gotta say. Uh, I've been really enjoying it. It's been way better than the 9Bot 1S2 I had before because the 9Bot just had the pedals too low. The pedals were also very small. Um, clearance was pretty small too, so this is a big step up from um, the 9Bot I had before. And in general, it's just very torquey. It has a 800 watt motor and feels more, I think it feels more zippy than the V5F. It's a 67 volt wheel, so 60 volt nominal, because hey, you see, always want to have higher numbers than scooters. But it's really torquey, feels zippy, feels very agile, and I really like the tire here. Like the tire thread, you can see that there's quite a big like a heavy tread on it for such a commuter wheel so even taking it light off-roading going up some inclines it feels actually quite great um, the turning radius is also good could be better like the pedals could be higher in my opinion like on the v5f i think they're higher uh, so it is possible to scratch them and it is not like a you know, uh, ride around without care in terms of, you know, pedal clipping or hitting it when you're turning and the, like a curb appears, but it's relatively good at that. Uh, there is no pedal dipping in turns, there is no pedal dipping in the successive bumps. Uh, in general, this feels just really cool when riding. The trolley handle might just be a bit loose, so sometimes you hear that which is kind of a small bummer, but not, not, not a big deal. I really enjoy riding on it. One thing to keep in mind though, is that if you're a heavier rider or you want to ride it at the upper top, upper end of the speed here, which is around 25, 30 kilometers an hour, you need to keep in mind that if there are any bigger bumps approaching or if there's like a big hole, pothole, um, it might overpower. You, you need to just in general be very loose on it when riding at top speed. Um, my favorite speed to ride around with this thing was between 10 and 20 kilometers an hour. I think that's where it feels really the best. If you have a like very straight line, feel free to you know just go 25, 30. But in any more like complicated areas, compli complicated streets or bicycle paths, feel free to slow down a bit. One thing you can change is the tire size, which is 14 inches. And especially if the bumps just become a bit bigger, it's very like, it's, it's jumping up and down. But that's the price we need to pay if we have a wheel that is, you know, so, so small and just weighs 14 kilograms. All right. All right, so now let's talk performance. And even though this wheel is quite small, it still packs a punch. And in terms of 14 inch wheels, well, except for the MCM5 V2, this is one of the fastest around. It has a 800 watt motor, which allows it to accelerate pretty swiftly. I didn't really do a acceleration test with it. Maybe that's something I need to do in the future, but it feels very zippy in terms of acceleration. It feels very instant and very fun and playful. So so even like changing directions, turning around is very awesome on this wheel and it's very cool to, you know, um, just do tricks with it because it just responds to you that instantly. Um, in terms of hill climbing, I did a incline test at 22 degrees steepness and it could go up this incline. However, it started beeping at me maybe like three quarters of the way through because it was overpowering. So I guess anywhere between 15 to 20 degrees incline is good for it. It uh, depends also on the right of way, it depends on the you know conditions, but 
in day-to-day -day use you will not encounter much you know steepness over 10 degrees or even 5 degrees so so there is still headroom for inclines however it's still no hill climb champ like the bigger wheels the top speed of this wheel is around 30 kilometers an hour but you need to keep in mind that if the battery state gets lower there is progressive tilt back so as the battery you know percentage goes down you will have less um, less of top speed which is natural this is also a 60 volt wheel 67 peak voltage wheel so the top speed will not be as high as with 84 volt wheels so in my range test I did around 20 eight or nine kilometers something like that and 20 the first 20 kilometers were just you know fine riding like I do usually some I know inclined some tricks uh, but the top speed wasn't anything that I was worried about but after these 20 kilometers the top speed drops down to like 20 and then 15 and then even 10 kilometers an hour So, so the last, I don't know, 20% or 15% are just like really a pain to ride. So for journeys of around 20 kilometers, I would say no problem, go ahead. But everything above starts to be a bit of a struggle. Charging is very nice with this thing. We have a two amp charger in the box, which is fanless and I am a fan of that and it charges the wheel up in four hours and you know if we never really discharged our, those wheels to zero percent so even like three hours uh, i would say charging is just really quick with this thing and that's a thing i really enjoy turning on it also like performance turning um, you can feel that the uh, you know tire is narrow and it's small it doesn't give you like the feedback of the bigger wheels like 16 by 3 inch or even 16 by two and a half inches like on the Emotion V10F. This is a 14 by 2 and 1 eighths, so 2.125 uh, tire, which is good and acceptable, acceptable for this EUC. However, don't expect it to be anything like a sporty ride or if you're a heavier rider, it's better also to go with a bigger wheel. I typically ride this wheel at higher pressure, like 40, 45 PSI, just to keep my rim safe, not in order not to bend it. And then it's also the most maneuverable. Uh, so at low speeds it's great and maneuverable and zippy and all of that. The padding also is pretty great. Uh, feels much better than the V5F in my eyes and I can actually like, grab hold of it whilst on the V5F it's just like too thin. Um, but in terms of like higher speed riding it will feel a bit you know dicey but definitely not as dicey as the, the, the M10 III. All right, so let's talk a bit about the features we have here. So first, let me turn it on. And it right away says... Bluetooth is connected. A bit annoying, but hey, um, that's what we get here. Happily, there is no more Hello King Song <laughs> on this uh, version of the wheel. So what we have here, you heard it already, are Bluetooth speakers. And the Bluetooth speakers are one of the best, actually, I've heard on electric wheels. It's so surprising that such a small wheel packs so many features. So let me just search for a song or something. No copyright songs. Lights up too. According to loudness. Very cool. Wow, it's so loud. It's it's really great, and the ba bass is pretty good. The mids are maybe a bit like over oversaturated, but for a wheel speaker, it's quite impressive actually. So right away in this vicinity, you can also see these LED stripes here on the side, which you can also customize. But by default, this is your battery indicator. So if you're stopping, you won't need to just like look what's your battery. You just look to the side, and you can see it. Um, I didn't use it that much, and I much prefer the you know battery indicator on the motions here in the front. But this is also cool that we have it. And then if you start riding, you can also see that. They start doing stuff also according to speed. Now this is the preset I have, but you can also have something else. And when the battery is really low, then, should I just do that? Yeah. And when the battery is really low, it starts to flash red. Really cool. 
We have also lighting in front and back, which is awesome. V5 doesn't have that either. And it goes in both directions. So it, now you have the front light here, but you can also press a button or keep it in auto and you have the front light here. And then there's also a red tail light here in the back. Let me see if I can show it to you. Yeah, here it is. Now, both of these lights could be brighter. I mean, they're usable on this EUC, but that's definitely a thing I would like to see on a upgraded, I know, Kingsong 14E, <laughs> because there was already the B, C, and this is the D, um, or F, I don't know. Name it whatever you want, Kingsong. Another preset is that you have a dimmer light in front and back. I don't know really what it's for, but hey, this was what we have. Finally, the last preset, or the main preset of it, is the auto preset where it automatically is where it automatically selects where um, where to shine the light depending on the direction you're going at and you can also use the brightness indicator or like a light sensor and if it gets dark it starts to shine uh, the light I don't find this sensor to be that useful because sometimes it gets just by, uh, brighter under a street light and the light turns off. So usually I just like press the button once and, and, and we're good. I, I don't change direction on the EUC that often. Um, so next up I like the power button placement which is here right away next to the trolley handle switch. This is just a small thing but it's great because you just hold the EUC and then you turn it on. Uh, I really like the trolley handle and it doubles also as a lift switch. So there is no button here. There are sensors I believe here on the bottom which sense that you're lifting the wheel. Another awesome thing, it also works if you lift it up. Yeah, really, really cool, very practical. Sometimes it was a bit of a hit, hit or miss, especially if I'm not, um, you know, at zero kilometers an hour with the EUC, which is also, you know, for safety. but in general, very, very cool option. The trolley handle is also nice and high, uh, very nice to use it. Then we have also the port selection. We have a GX, uh, no, that's the USB port. We have a USB port for charging up your phone with this rubber flap, which isn't, which is still connected to EUC. And here we have one that was disconnected. I'm the second owner of this wheel, so that happened before. And we have a GX16-3 port like we see on scooters. Sadly, one pin is missing. I don't know if that's stock or not, but it's still charging. So I don't know, that's that. And we can close it up again. Naturally, just like any other EUC, you can also connect it to the app, have all of your useful information. So that's also really cool. As said, customizable lights, customizable alarms, everything that is on big wheels is pretty much also here on the Kingsong 14D. So in total, the 14D is a wheel which packs a lot of features. A lot of those features are missing in other, you know, 14 inch wheels. I really like the ride, really like the features just pretty cool. To conclude it all, I really enjoy using the Kingsong 14D and I think that there is really a space for such vehicles out on the market. And now I wanted to talk a bit about the, you know, smaller wheels and their development in the all in all in the uh, wheel wheel world. Wheel wheel world. Essentially, these smaller wheels, especially 14 inch wheels, don't really get much love from the manufacturers. I think the only wheel that really got some sort of, you know, upgrade was the MTM5 V2, which was a great upgrade because of the bigger tires or their L hangers, so on and so on. But the 14D stays the same for years now. The Emotion V5F is also the same and it's cheaper than the 14D but it also has a smaller battery so between those two I would probably go with the 14D just in terms of the range and just the features that it has also like a taillight all these things are pretty great about the 14D but from in motion from King Song we really didn't see anything groundbreaking in the smaller wheel world now I also understand their point of view because you know development of new products is always you know difficult and costly and while you already have a product in this price range and this performance it's better to you know invest in something bigger 
and something that you know brings more money potentially and something that's better for a wider audience because if you have more range if you have more batteries if you have a bigger motor um, more people can just use your product and I fully get that but I think that especially 14 inch smaller 16 inch wheels like the V8F now the V8F did get a new upgrade with the V8S now uh, I'm gonna test it at some point soon but it's still the same shell for um, that we've seen for years now in, in motions lineup and the same same thing applies for for king song so i'd really like to see a you know mini v12 or like a mini king song 16x like a 14x uh, be, with like high discharge batteries because these batteries are just like you know some off the shelf you know regular batteries just some I don't know if they're even like you know, LGs or anything. These are just like stock batteries, rechargeable lithium ion batteries. So I would really like to see like a small EUC with you know good parts, strong L hangers, really strong electronics that will also hold up heavier riders uh, with a high discharge battery, like we often see in um, skateboards, like electric skateboards, for example, you know Sony VTC fives or other high performance um, cells because probably in those smaller wheels it's still better to use 18650s just because of the amount of batteries um, that you can pack into this limited form factor. Maybe also 21700s, I don't know, I'm not really a battery expert, but what I know is that these batteries aren't high performance. So, so if they would really do some sort of small 16X or like micro V12, I think that would be really great for a wide range of people that just use it to go onto the metro uh, or they throw it into the bus or they want to just have something that doesn't need that much range but has more of the agility and the lightness of smaller wheels. Perhaps maybe at like a wider tire too if, if, if that's possible. So I'll keep using the 14D, I probably report back after a while to give you another review, maybe after a thousand or two thousand kilometers. Feel free to comment below what you think of small wheels, do you like small wheels, do you think there's a niche or do you think there's a you know whole gap in the market to be filled by a new solid small wheel or if, it, or if you think that everything under like thousand watt hours because it's 420 watt hours um, isn't really you know a real product that you would use in everyday life so if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video and this wheel has a battery capacity of 420 watt hours so appreciate that king song appreciate that